Good evening folks, this is Bob from BBD shooting on this day in Sunday from my uh, studio in Delhi. Important stuff that I'm going to say right now, right? Sunday. You have PM pushes for India UNC Steel, ask how long must we wait? Take swipe at China. It takes swipe at China. What do you mean swipe at China? He's taking a swipe at China without either naming naming China or naming Pakistan. I'm not sure, I, I can understand why he doesn't name Pakistan. But by not naming China, he's playing, in my view, playing into the hands of China completely. Because it shows our temerity, it shows our weakness. Apparently, it's got to do something with our, our pacifist nature. Something we are supposed to be a, a, a pacifist nation. Don't understand that at all, right? As we go to the next article, it says, luckily for us, Rajnath on the other hand, is a lot more uh, vociferous in what he's saying. He says, we have parity with PLA, can give befitting reply, says Rajnath. And that's the kind of answer that we need to give to China all the time. You have another one which says, India slams pack PM at UNGA for terror export. This is absolutely wrong. Both whether it's the Prime Minister or whether it's, it's, it's Jay Shankar, they're absolutely wrong when they try and nail Pakistan for terror. Because there are reports now from our own, all our own uh, national security agencies which are suggesting that China is actually working with ISI to increase terror in Kashmir because they are up the creek without a paddle as far as Ladakh is concerned. If we don't name and shame China at this point in time, as far as terror is concerned, we are doing an extreme amount of disservice to our country. And I think this is something that our, our people in power must realize. Well, that's okay. PM ignores Imran's JNK remarks in UNGA speech. But that's okay. Imran is nobody. Think about it this way. Imran is absolutely nobody. He's, he's got himself into a corner and has no way to get out of it. He sold his soul to China. You have this situation where the maximum number of mosques were destroyed in, in Xianjing. And what does Imran have to say for it with his lovely stature? Not, absolutely nada. What does the Pakistan army have to say about it, Bajwa? Absolutely nada. And these guys are pretending to be protectors of, 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 of minorities in India or of Jammu and Kashmir. Do they even deserve Jammu and Kashmir at all? Absolutely not. They've sold their soul to China for a few dollars more. Like they did, like this had sold their soul earlier to the United States of America. Now that's what we say. Another thing that's good thing that's happening for India, India, Japan, Navy's kick off three days exercise. As I said yesterday, something really peculiar is happening with these, all these CAG reports. And you say this, and I told you that at yesterday that you know there was something amiss with, with, with the BJP. And right now I can see Ram Madhav, Murli Dhar out. So a major restructuring exercise in, uh, in the BJP. And I don't think that is really, I mean that should actually send us a picture of what is happening. It's not, everything is not kosher. But let's come back to this. We were talking about Vichy. I said we had four red circles. We had Pakistan, we had Maldives, we had Sri Lanka, we had Myanmar and we had Nepal. A lot of these are shifting now. One of them is Sri Lanka, which I would say has turned somewhat orange from red. They are up again a creek without a pad. Raj Paksa, for whatever he is, has overplayed his hand as far as India is concerned. But it was interesting to see uh, uh, our Prime Minister talk to the Sri Lankan uh, Prime Minister saying India to support Sri Lanka boosts its defense security. That's okay. I think we've got a leg in, right? We've got to ensure, just like Maldives, we push China right out and the democratic process and the will of the people will ensure we do that. What is to be noted though is while we pretend that things are better, this is what we this is what is the red line for India. However, there was no word on whether Eastern Container Terminal ECT deal with Rajpaksa had promised to review would go to India and Japan as originally agreed. 
There was also no meeting point on the impasse regarding the Trincomalee container terminal which was hanging fire. For India, at this point of time, we have Sri Lanka over the coals. Their feet are above the, on the coals. It's important to remember that. You have to draw the red lines and you cannot throw at any cost the Tamil population of Sri Lanka under the bus. They are your biggest assets. Now I will continue with what I think about Nepal right after this. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bob from BBD talking about uh, our relationships with Nepal. As we heard that yesterday the, the, the policeman shot at civilians from our side, whatever the reason may have been given. It all actually started way back with an innocuous ribbon cutting ceremony, virtual one at that, by Rajnath Singh of the road connecting for the Kailash Mansur Mansur over here. And obviously there was a messaging in that by Rajnath too because he wanted to send a message to China that we were ramping up our infrastructure on the border. However, guess whose nicker got twisted? Mr. Oli. Mr. Oli is, if you all know, is the Prime Minister of this big country called Nepal. And not only that, it's probably that that twisting had, had lots of help from his brother Shi. She twisted the nigger for him and, 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 and Oli jumped all over the place. And before you knew it, you had a situation where you had a report which said, Nepal tables bill to alter map amid row. Right. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this bill so moved so fast, before even India could say jack shit, it had already become a new map had been released. So what is there to talk about right now? It is a dispute. Okay. Now, however, where this goes back to, unfortunately, the reason for all this is a is a colored cul a cultural religious relationship we think we have with you know Nepal about this great Hindu king, last great Hindu kingdom. But yeah, I'll send you. I, I would tell you about a, a body language of an image that is is, is, is has been kind of printed on my mind is when uh, our Prime Minister went for, for this great visit to the Pashupati Mandir. And as you know how we are, we are, we are so subs uh, obsequious when we go into all these temples. And there, on the side, was Mr. Oli, standing straight as if he didn't care, and, and actually had a snide snigger on his face. It tells you, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Communist Party. They are not religious. They are not Hindu. That's, that's, that's the definition of a Communist Party. And now let's come to this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about about what finally Sham Saran has to say. Most importantly, the Narendra Modi government needs to shed its fond expectation that Nepal's affinity with India because of its Hindu heritage is sufficient to consolidate political re relations with the country. It absolutely is not. And then you have uh, 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 C. Ra uh, C. Raja Mohan Rai, also very something similar. Discarding the appearance of the special relationship might in fact make it easy for Delhi to construct a more durable and interest-based partnership with Kathmandu that is rooted in realism and has strong popular support on both sides. You know, and then you have reports from the MEA which says, India to act tough with Nepal's leader, connect with people. About time. And, and as Shishir Gupta right, rightly writes, New Delhi not open to dialogue with Kathmandu on map issue. Hey, what the hell can we talk about anyway? It's already a dispute. And, and look at it further. Nepal has already started deploying police at 15 border outposts. So they are sending a clear message to India. And India really cannot step back from this. And let's just take some, a historical uh, view on India, India's relationship. You know, at the end of the day, it were these these Gurkha kings that had in the 18th century, I think it was 1814, that invaded India and took over Kumaon, took over uh, the Tarai, took over even Sikkim. And that's what caused the dispute. It's only the British that pushed them off and established the new borders. So hey, you, this, part of the, this part of the territory anyway belonged to India, depending on which, how far back you go back into history. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that's been done on China's behest. And anybody who tells us, Otherwise, like I, I, I heard someone say, oh, it was it was our chief's statement that uh, but Nepal worked on the uh, under the under the uh, influence of China that got them up. There. Hey, so what? He told the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Let's build our spine and stand up to this uh, to, to to Nepal because at the end of the day, Nepal has been misusing us 
by using this, you know, this this guilt complex of this big brother, big big, big brother issue. Thank you so much.